Uh, we started to plant some uh, broad beans outdoors also, besides the ones that I have in the polytunnel. This is the variety Monica, which I bought from the CNC. seed. Uh, I planted the boneyard exhibition here in these rows, about seven rows, and I'm going to put some holly leaves on them. Lots of leaves of holly I've cut, and uh, I will put it just to uh, detract the rats. That's one of the exhibition. I'm going to do it. It's quite dark at the moment. You see, it's bright, but it's actually dark. So, I have to be quick. Okay, I already have a piece of land covered in the broad beans, and I have some also in the polytunnel, but I want to have more so I can freeze them. Broadbean Monica is one of the earliest, probably the earliest uh, broadbean you can sow. And now in this uh, new greenhouse that I've built, and as you see here, uh, I'm protected from the wind, drain, and the elements here. I'm trying to plant some of these, just in the case if there is any gap between those other broad beans. Some of them were eaten probably by the rat or they didn't germinate. Uh, I will have something to replace them. So I'm going to do it now. That's the broad bean Monica. For the sake of the germination, I plant two in each uh, seed module, seed uh, uh, module compartment. So, uh, if one of them germinates and the other germ didn't germinate, I've not lost anything. Hopefully both of them will germinate, who knows. So I'm going now to uh, plant this in the module. Okay, as you can hear, the wind is uh, lashing outside and I'm planting in the safety of the new greenhouse that I built with the window panes and uh, I'm planting two in each uh, module. Monica is the earliest uh, broad bean so because now it is March, March 5th I think it is today, uh, I will have also a chance to get a crop in the May. So uh, I'm now putting two seeds in each hole as you see this is a, a broad bean from the CNC they are, they are treated in a way, so they will not rot in the ground, they will not get moldy. Uh, and hopefully we will have a better germination rate from them. So, uh, in this module, which has a 5x4, it means 20 uh, sections in this seed tray, uh, means I can have at least 20 seedlings, but because I have doubled the amount, it's multi-sowing. Uh, technique uh, so I will have a multiple uh, double the amount of the uh, each module so 40 plants so beautiful sunshine outside sometimes you see rain sometimes you see wind but here inside is nice and lovely You'll see how it will do. Take a few pictures. And now I will cover them. Now I have covered them and to give them a better chance of uh, uh, holding their roots, I have compressed them. So a little bit just to compress the compost. So, they will have a good anchor for the roots. The roots can just uh, yeah, grow very firmly. And that's it. In the greenhouse that I built just yesterday. And, uh, okay, we, in this area we have some rats. They come and go. We live in nature practically, so we cannot avoid them. They are here. If you get rid of one, the next one will come and replace them. Uh, so what we have to do, vermins practically. Uh, so what we have to do is to protect also against them. And one way of protection is that when you have something like uh, um, broad beans that they like and other seeds that they may like it, like peas, the best way is to put something on your uh, seed until they germinate. So I have this clear plastic 
and I'm putting it now on top of this uh, seed tray hoping that uh, the rats will not be able to access this when it is on top of it so we will see how if it works that's that's brilliant and uh, yeah good protection in a way and also it stops the evaporation and keeps it warm kind of warm environment to grow we will see if it works This is the broad bean bed that I planted uh, in January, I think, or late January, early February. And as you see, it was in the Nordic bed, leaf mold just, and I planted the broad beans there. I now removed the cover, the black uh, tarpaulin, and as you see, the broad beans are out. What I will do, because these leaf molds are not uh, completely contained now, I will spread some compost on them. Here's a bag of compost, very cheap, I got it from Morrison's. Three bags for nine pound. Each bag is 70 liters, which is about 70 kilogram. And that is about a quarter of a ton. And now I'm going to- cover the leaf mold and the uh, road beans with a layer, thin layer of compost. Just the areas that are covered uh, with the actual plants like here and I don't touch the um, these uh, hollies holly leaves just letting them to take care of the rest of the job if they are effective that will be the what we want against the rats I'm talking about yeah so broad beans and as you can see the ones which are here Monica have really done better than the ones uh, uh, early onward, I think it's all oh, what what it was. I forgot. Green shaft, hers green shaft. Anyway, the Monica shining as ever. I have a set of Monica in the uh, greenhouse, which I show you that. These are the Monica broad beans, which have sown in the uh, modules in the greenhouse, and as you see, they have grown well. This is one of the most beautiful uh, leaves of a broad bean that I've ever seen, probably, at such an early stage. And I will plant these ones wherever there is a gap in the main bed. Sometimes we don't notice what we have. And I was watering the three sister system and I just beautiful smell of the flowers of broad bean filled my nose <laughs> so I remembered what Sean was telling in the horticultural channel showing uh, the leaves of his uh, broad beans and they looked very thin and uh, uh, kind of without any width and pointed kind of leaves uh, I just wanted to see how is mine and I look at it and I see that it seems so far we don't have that problem and this can make the point valid that uh, that is something caused probably by the pesticide in manure that people use I have not used any manure this was just the soil, I planted my to uh, potato last year in it, Christmas potatoes. And then I just topped it with some uh, thick layer of the leaf mold. And then when I planted this, I also added a little bit of soil to this compost. And that's it, that was it. And so far we have got away with this. I want to show what my neighbors has done. So we'll see if, if it is the same observation. Uh, by the way, I can see that uh, ants are now climbing the 
growing stems of the broad beans. That means they are bringing the uh, black flies there. So we have to be careful. And uh, the broad beans of my neighbor, I don't see anything on that. No thinning or yeah, narrow kind of leaf on the tip. So that is unique to what uh, Sean was showing in his horticultural channel. So that's it, Sean. I think that you may be right. This can be a, mm, yeah, weed killers that they have used on the uh, farms and the manure produced from that uh, wheat or hay or straw fed to the cattle and horses contain that weed killer and when you use it in your own garden you transfer all those poisons that causes a special kind of tree, uh, plants with leaves that are sensitive to those kind of weed killers absorb it and then suffer actually the, it stops or slows down the growth on the way to the nasty I came across this uh, huge field of broad beans just to show how big it is very interesting We are in the broad bean, field bean uh, farm and Susan noticed something, these lines, these grooves that have caught in the soil and in the gaps that they have cut, the seeds of the field bean are planted and obviously they didn't bother too much about the wheat, although near the edge of the farm there are weeds and the rest of it doesn't have much. So I suppose they grow until July and they give some beans and then they feed them to the cattle. Huh? This is the way they look. They are almost near the flowering. Yeah, are you harvesting the beautiful broad beans? You need a big basket for that. Let me bring something for it. Take some and then take some more. Yeah, mm -hmm. they will go off at home. Got to cook them. Yeah, we have to freeze them, shell them and freeze. We can eat them also fresh. You cook the whole pot and uh, you can just uh, eat with the skin. The skin separate and the pods also separate. With salt and a little bit, uh, you know, a Persian. Uh, uh, kind of herb called uh, golpar means the flower petal. It's kind of parsley like seed or parsnips like seed. Looks like them and smells like them. Just ground them and then mix it with salt and add. You're using a paper bag for this, huh? Is it better? Yeah. yeah they don't sweat. No sweat. Yeah. This is the first. Uh, or oh, onward, whatever her long shaft. And that is the Monica. Monica is already ready. We can harvest that one also. Lots of things to harvest. Yeah. Let us see one of them, Susan. Let us see how it looks. Oh, oh. No, that's, okay. that's all right. We can eat it. You know, I can boil it. Don't worry. Put the just a seat there. Just a seat. Oh, they are ready, Susan. They are ready. ready. I know I tasted them. Oh, yeah. oh, that's the time. Good timing. And I'm thinking to actually put the potatoes here this year again. Christmas potato. Hopefully. 
I see some of them for the first time have got some aphid. This year we didn't have any aphid on this. Black. Now we have a few. I don't know how we escaped it, but it seems we managed. Although they were on our cherries, they were busy damaging the cherries. <laughs> So thank you, Susan, for this. This really goes well with the broad bean. Is this mint? Any kind of mint. In, including all this mint that we have here. It goes really well with broad bean. You are going to enjoy this tonight. Lots of harvest of broad bean, and yet a lot more to go. Especially Monica, which is really good variety. Look at the size of the pots. They're huge, they're like big sausages. Compared to the hair screen shaft, they're really good. And onward. Just for the sake of comparison, look at this protein. How massive it is. If I open it, you can see the inside. You can see these are the biggest uh, broad beans I've seen in the UK so far. I've never saw such a big beans in any broad bean. These are massive. They're almost one inch in size. And this one has given one, two, three, four, four large beans. And as you see, there is a lot more harvest. I think, I think this is enough for now. Yeah. We can eat them. <laughs> this is probably, if you buy it in the shop, probably you have to pay five pounds for this, all of this. This is about two and a half kilos. And yet we have a lot to go. Looking forward to the next crop of broad beans. We never had such a good quality in the broad beans. This is the first year we have such a really good quality, consistent, good size of the beans. Yeah. It's the Monica and the uh, Hertz long shaft, I think something like that. A really good quality and we have a lot yet. And we have a lot in the allotment just to harvest. That's the ones that we have here, just harvested just for tonight. Just to eat. The quality, the consistency of the beans is really exemplary this year. Monica is my favorite. I have to grow Monica next year also. I bought it from CNC. Mm. Mm -hmm. Where you got this mint? Oh, did we? Oh, you like flavor. It's nice, it just gives a little bit of flavor. Oh, lovely. Yeah, and some with the pink as well. That's dinner tonight along with our own eggs. Yes. Everything on this plate is from allotment, eggs, uh, broad beans, peas, uh, the fennel, the mint, salt is not from allotment, lettuce, cut and come again, and ice break. What I can say that the fresh broad bean, it melts in the mouth, it's so beautiful and delicious. <laughs> it's, it's such a beautiful thing this time. When you cook it fresh, that's what happens. If it was old, that would have not been tasty. It melts in the mouth.
somebody was flaming something painful. <laughs> <laughs>